Hello and welcome as it is uh, the 23rd day of February 2021, 10.35 p.m. Eastern Time as we enter into the 24th day of the month. Start off within the price of silver charts, all bets, trades, and amongst the like. Of course, that's Cheech's own risk and their own reward. What has changed over from before? From before... Oh, you know, we started from September the 21st when it came back for a second time to find support at 23.6% Fibonacci level. Showing us that it might have came down to 38.2, not quite, but close. And more importantly, congesting for a significant period of time amongst the 24 handle. Doing so on that of uh, September the 21st again and leaving it on December the 16th. So for practically the final season of the year, for a month, three months. And then from that point, what has been changing with higher lows? We have a low here at the uh, 22 low change. And then again at the Fibonacci mark in here, we're congested. And you can say lows in the area of 2464 with this one higher than the previous one on that of January the 20th. And we've now had a couple of lows come in here, February the 5th and again in here. So higher lows, we make an uptrend line. It's been showing strength amongst the average 18 average of highs for the most part and definitely over the last couple of days or so. Uh, just correcting very well within this move. An attempt to break down below on the 19th, not so much. And now it's, yeah, for since it's gotten above, and what we got, 27 and three quarters. Since it's gotten above that level, holding and staying above that is basically what it has done. But within that, we can see that the previous, that area, was an area that it resisted, but it came back over again, holding within the 18 this far. And I mean, long term, I am extremely confident silver is going to be doing very, very magnificent, especially in the now term. And it wouldn't surprise me on the now term, I guess you could say. Now term meaning over the next few many days, weeks and months as uh, with all the current uh, condition of uh, culture world, the cultures and how the world is on all levels and of course through monetary uh within of course all everyone under more and more and more people understanding how fiat currencies are created and all those beautiful things now let's transition into that of bitcoin which is in at fifty thousand four hundred dollars okay it's definitely extended above the 18 average of highs this will be as it's up right now 52 percent for the month it's going to be an up month and it will be the fifth consecutive up month in a row, seven within the last eight months, and nine within the last 11 after it had the lows of under 4,000. It's up over 12 times from that level. And it's up how much more from, not much more from this, 3,000, but hey, how about from these lows of around 200? Uh, well, 10 would be 2,000, 100 would be 20,000. So about, 200 or so times it's just doing its thing weekly term time frame we we are now in a down week we haven't had a down week since uh stamp of january 18th or we've had four up weeks in a row still above the 18 average of highs it hasn't even touched the band since it lifted off from it at around eleven or thousand dollars before halloween market is still way overextended it's had a little bit of correctionary moves along the way. Just being a little bit here. I mean, what a move this was. So how did it correct that move? It did this. Oh, what a move this is. So far, this current week is what it's been. So this continuing comeback where we came from right now, we're looking at this, we'd meet in this area, we'd meet within the 18. And it's very much due to have its first test within it. Now, if it doesn't, or if it barely tests it much at all, and then it just lifts off from it, this thing does have the potential for monstrous moves because of its uptrend. So you got to keep that in mind. But again, overextended and how big of an up move. Well, I calculated 100 plus thousand. If it does, if, if it breaks out now and on the shorter term time frame, we have in the next little bit, it gets above the 18 average of fives. I don't think this is likely. But if it does happen and you start to see momentum after this current correctionary move that's come to the 18 average, I would be thinking, okay, get your seatbelts on. This could be one wild ride. I wouldn't be surprised despite heavier volume 
And again, I expected to break this in 60, 70, 80,000, not 100 even, so fast. Again, unlikely to happen to just even get above it. But if it does, the odds of big, big moves become high. It's got to get above previous high, but I like the odds of it doing that even still if it goes to like 50, 56,000 high change to 57. So the move on two days, we had down 5.7% and 9.7% over the last two days. Seeing the price action come back down to where we came from in the uh, Valentine's Day area, give or take a few days before and after it time frame. Price action did not come back to where we came from the start of the year highs, at least not as of yet. And of course, the major areas where we came from previous all time highs of uh, 20,000. Yeah, we may come back to that. We might not. It's our, to come back to that now, the market would have to lose 60% from where we are now. So that would be uh, no guarantee. That, in fact, it might become unlikely for that to happen. But it's still, we were so overextended. If it does come back down to 20, okay, so that's what it's going to do. And of course, we talk about the, the extendedness on this. If this comes back to here, then okay, that's just... Market, we're doing what have I said about when a market has a big move. Oh, extend to a longer term time frame for the 18 monthly. Well, the 18 average of highs is rising. Well, the 18 average of lows is still like, what, like 13, 14,000, whatever. So it definitely meet up with something like that. And that's if it happens. So it was, okay, well, same thing when you're breaking. Oh, you could come back to like 1,200, 1,400 when we're in here. No, we didn't. So no guarantee you come back to where we came from. Okay, so daily term time frame, again, just a beautiful move that it's had. It's in the correctionary phase. We look at this on the short term, how volatile this has been. On uh, the session on February 22nd, coming back down to the 47,385 handle. And then rallying way back up to 53, but unable to hold that move and then having another leg. And then four or so periods just, and even still doing it currently having these high volatile moves within where it was at previous high, really congesting within the lowest area. And we see this amongst the hourly. This was the move in here, just really, really fast down, got it back up, able to survive this sell-off in here, but of course not able to survive the one from uh, 5 p.m. yesterday, or on the 22nd, to 5 a.m. And within the hourly term time frame, this is his first real attempt since its all time, last all-time high to reverse the trend. For Fibonacci analysis, I think I've got this ready to go. This is 44,000, which is the slow in here and the high. So we have 23.6 at 47,700. Now, usually when I say with markets, they usually pierce extra. Well, this will be one time we see it won't, but not here, though. So within the five-minute term time frame, how did this level work? And it's from the time it hit this low. It came up to resist it, support it for a little bit, but now it congested it, resisted it again. Came back to previous low, but it survived that. At least at that point, it did. Retested previous high. So it really became a major range-bound market. Still trying to decide if it's going to be resistance or support, but looking like support here at 20 hours, which is just recently. So whether it will be or not, well, it would either be yes, it would be support, we go to next key level. And then after that, we would uh, go to, uh, we'll go to next key level. And then if it's not, it's a failed move. And you can look at support from this low to this high, which means must hold area for this as I'm looking at be 48. But as it goes, the next key Fibonacci area is in at 50, or excuse me, 49,590. Um, 49, what was the number again? 590. Because when I checked it before, it was barely missed it. Yeah, this would have been right here. 49582. Usually it pierces extra. I, I mean, this is why I say it doesn't make sense why it should do that on random occurrences, especially when I'm a random number generator freak. I'm a data freak looking at large variance and samples. So I would expect if I just have a mathematical level, it's going to barely hit it on one side or another. 
it, it should be just as but as much that it's above it and below it. But it's not in this case. But mathematically speaking, this is a barely miss. Although it's it is an exact hit, technically, like practically, but technically it is a pierce under that number. But with that being said, it's gotten above it. And it did so here. It's just now holding, staying above it a little bit, making it very, very important. So the next key, make it very, it's a very nice, important thing to do for you, for you to want to see it hold that move. It's already established resistance on the short term at this point. So you see it getting above it, especially because it's been correcting within the 18 for a while. Well, that, it, that would be a statement that is going to next key level, which is 61.8%, 52,770. And that's the key mathematical level that it needs to uh, get in cold and stay, break above, hold and stay above for this to be a failed move. For this to be a real selling move. That means, yeah, it needs to hold and stay below it. So we can still come up to it and there's still no evidence other than the fact that we're in an amazing bull market and fundamental analysis that the uh, this is a failed sell-off. But Because technically, I want to, like I say, need to see it get above it. But if you see any resistance, whether it be here or at that level, start to break down below it, you still got to give the benefit of the doubt that this, at least for another leg lower, is a real move. And if it does make a new leg lower from here, I mean, it's well, well overextended. So, yeah, just at least back in this congestion area, you'd have to think is one little bit of an area, which is a noticeable pierce below 40,000. And finishing this off, now I want to go to Theta. I have a big, big feeling that this thing is just going to go off huge soon. I mean, if it does, it does. If it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm going to be ready for the situation and ready to analyze, okay, based on whatever's going on, because only price pays. So based on that, what do I, if I do this now, I know I'm going to have this result mathematically. Do I want to take it? And then that's say, okay, if I sell this, buy this, those are what the results are. Only price pays. So you can, and I like this, this is something Brian Shannon has been stating in his videos that, who's basically my, uh, he, he got me into making these in the sense I really enjoyed watching them when I was younger and I still felt I was old back then, back in my 30s, I guess, or well, well long ago. Now I'm in my 40s, but I was watching his videos and that gave me the motivation to make them as I've been doing for so, so, so long now. And he'd be saying like only price pay. So you think about that. Okay, well, I believe this is going to go way up or way down to here at some point. Well, you can believe all you want about that. And if you're damn good at understanding that, then make your bets and investment and trades to do such accordingly. But regardless of the fact, you could say silver is going to be worth two, three, four, five hundred, and you're not going to be able to sell it at that price, and you'd be an idiot to buy it at that number. And you could say, oh my goodness, Theta is going to be worth like five, six, ten times this against Bitcoin. It's going to be worth 20, 50, 60 bucks. You can't sell it for that price. And anything you think is going to be a pullback, okay, well, if you're right, you're just going to have to wait. That's, oh, I can't wait. I can't wait. You have to wait. That's just how it goes. Same thing for if you're waiting for these big prices. And a lot of people have been waiting for it. For, I mean, just going back to the day, you can go back to my old videos talking about this. Okay, here we are in this bridge. Oh, an attempt to break out here. We've been in this range between like not 1,000 and like this. And we've had, we have this previous high here. Uh, we got to get up to this point. Maybe we can get up to here if we get to that. It did all that already. And then at the price against the dollar, 10 cents, 7 cents, 12 cents, 15 cents. Now it's what, three bucks or two something? I don't know. But I do like, I'll get the product, I'll do the chart against the dollar as well. But I do like the way this is moving. Four hour term time frame, going down a little bit of a downtrend, key low to key high, and all these volatile up and down moves. You just look at this, you can do any formula calculations you have to do, go just figure it out if you need to. But if you see the choppy moves like this, there's a, only price pays. You can take advantage of it if you know how to do it. And you're able to do it. Now, one easy way is just always have your buy and sell orders in. And if you're able to take advantage of it, sell at 6,600, buy back at 58, you're 12% moves on many occasions, what we've been seeing uh, in the month of February alone. And we're three weeks into it or so. And we're just seeing a lot of volatility in this four hour term time frame as it is now. Single hour term, getting above the 18 average at 8 o'clock this morning. Beautiful job amongst holding within the 18. Resistance established hitting twice between 63.78 again at 64.77, getting it above in that period at 20 hours or 8 p.m. Eastern time. And it has now managed to uh, 
get up towards this level here and let me just calculate fib just for something to do i haven't done it yet 7830 is at the key high most certainly it is 7830 and the key low here is uh 7830 5664 or 50 no 50 684 5634 see that's how bad i am remembering numbers Okay, so key numbers, basically 38, 62, 38 and the 61 are what I'm looking at. 6,400 Satoshi and 69. See, and then the 64 did what it was supposed to do. And then, yeah, here, here's where it pierced less and then it pierced extra. I mean, of course. I mean, it'd be like, hey, usually it pierces more. It didn't do it here. Yeah, not the first time. It did the second time, though. And then after getting above it the second time... It's managed to make it to a high of 69.27, piercing 22 points more. Of course, I mean, why, why wouldn't it? I mean, well, of course, why wouldn't it? So if you had these numbers in advance, like, okay. So that's why I say understand how to do it, how you want to trade. You know that Fibonacci from this low because you knew this highway for a long time. And it's been in this downtrend. And originally, you would have Fibonacci from this side of this low doing its thing. Then you would have changed it. It wouldn't have changed really here. And then whenever this low is going to end, you're like, okay, as of now, it's 61. Nope, it changes. Now it's now 60, 40. Nope. Now it's 59, 11. Nope. And it came down to this low. So as it's going up, you knew all the key levels. It's like, okay, so we got a, a Fib market, 69.05. I'm going to put a sell order in for 68.89 or something. 68.94. That's pretty much how I'd be playing it if I were to do it from that game. And now you'd be looking for your buyback. Okay, I'm, where, where was my buyback? 63.89. Okay, 64.02. So I, I, I try to buy it back at that price or 64.07, something like that. So just however, if you want to play that game, that's just, there's so many different ways within this that can be played. When you're doing market trades, you're, you're basically, and anything in life for the most part, and pretty much everything as it is, is a gamble. Whether you... Choose whether you think of it as a gamble or not really doesn't change the fact. For example, if you think that uh, you're, say, I don't know, let's just say you're skydiving. You think you're skydiving. You're doing it. Well, you are. But let's just say you don't think you're skydiving. You're doing the exact same activity. Well, you're doing the exact same activity. That's the whole point I'm trying to say is you have to gamble in the life and the fact you have to take a risk of some sort of capital, whether it be monetary based or something else for a reward based on something of uncertain probability unlike something you don't know something that's not zero or 100 percent likely which is almost everything in this world okay all right so let's take a look at theta against the u.s dollar Three, three and a third. Earlier today, it was two and two thirds. So it's up about 30 plus another 30, like 70 cents or so on 265. So it's up over like 23% from this low. It's at that level. From the high, it managed to get close to four. Down to two, again, two and two, two thirds. So a buck and a third it lost on four. That's over 30%. Just from few hours few days it is as it as it is there's really nothing more to say about it but wow i mean a beautiful run theta has been having it's had fantastic moves up 30 40 50 times to 30 depending on where you are 20 times 10 times if you got in a, if you got that in it bought in breaking out here and you're still holding you're up 10 times right now and then if you bought at the all-time highs well you're down just a little bit but how many people have bought here at 52 cents and had to go through it being worth a quarter for a while. You know what happens. And then people who bought in here, oh, this break, it looked like it was breaking out here on February 14th, above 16 cents. And then people might get shaked out and how bad they feel right now. But you know what, though? That's part of the game. Low how to trade, no risk reward management. If you understand that you're going to make bets and they get shaken out, understand well how over variance of sample size does this strategy work? 
Uh, how can you prove to yourself that it does in whatever way? Yada, yada, yada. Now, for myself, I am, I've uh, been really busy lately, and I'm going to still continue to be through it most of the, well, for the rest of the National Hockey League season. As the uh, schedule, as far as how many games I'm allowed to play compared to last year's regular season, has most certainly been enlarged or larger. Thus, is more profitable for me. And I'm already, depending on how this final game between Edmonton and Vancouver goes, I'm, I'm actually quite near it right now after the first three games that came today with very small profits today so far. But coming into the day, I'm up very close to ten grand, well over 9000 And I'm up a few hundred bucks so far coming into maybe a couple max, 150 Coming into this final game, which is only in the first intermission, not the greatest of first periods for me, but it doesn't need to be considering the fact that I'm up close to 10000 and I got a good three-figure bet on this game. So if I lose it, oh, babe, okay, whatever. And, yeah, it's been something that's been very, very time-consuming and very busy at the uh, same time. But it's been fun at times and most certainly been profitable. But, yeah, I, you, you can make, like, pretty much playing as maximum stakes as I can be, play. Hockey season started five, five and a half weeks ago. And six weeks ago, maybe. And I've been able to put that kind of profit together. And I'm also at the stage where all the cryptocurrencies, well, geez, how much have I lost since Bitcoin was 58,000? Is it more than that? Yeah, it is. How much did I gain to get up to that point? Oh, a lot more. So to me, if I knew for sure that Bitcoin and all these cryptocurrencies was 100% guaranteed to survive, there would be no need for me to put this kind of time into how I plan. I could probably put in 25% of the time and at 65, 50, 50 to 50% of maybe not, not quite that much, maybe not quite that, 50% of the bet size. So when I come in today, I bet like a grand on today's hockey games. If I really wanted to put less time into it, I wouldn't be able to bet that much. As I'd have less combination of bets, I'd just spend like maybe 15 minutes on a game, 20 minutes, and I'd be done. And to do that, of course, I couldn't, I couldn't spend as much. And uh, yeah, that's just things I've been thinking about. It would be pretty cool if I could find it, if there were possibilities, because I'm pretty much playing the most that I could bet. I made a withdrawal on the week, at the start of this week. So I'm going to get paid for the first time, and they've paid me every time, and going to get... Uh, a little bit of a, a small check in the mail, which is always pretty cool. I'm going to finish this off with them Bitcoin dominance, but just basically uh, state that this, like, when you find a gambling game that you can win at, then understand what can I do to ensure profits come in? What do I need to do it? Is it worth doing? All that kind of things. And even to the state of, do you enjoy doing it? Because Financially speaking, when you get to the point where a net worth gets higher to the level where you can do more, buy more, then there becomes so many certain things that you would and did do in the past that you no longer would do anymore. As, and there's now there's so many things that you will do now that you never did before simply because you can afford it and that you, you couldn't afford it before. I know so many people watching this channel, and it's, they're not really doing a lot of that type of gambling that I'm talking about, which is either that's like the, any type of sports betting. Some people are, though. Uh, then po poker, I have had a couple of people message me that they are into uh, poker, and it most certainly is that of a grinding, profitable game. And it can be something that you can enjoy, but after playing, I don't know how many hands I've played. Have I played over a million in my life? I don't know. It's been a lot. It's... It's at the stage that I didn't play on Sunday. And I was saying to myself for a few days, and I thought on Saturday, okay, yeah, I missed it. And then, no, Sunday, I could still play on Sunday. I was thinking Sunday, I can still play. I was a hundred, it was a hundred or $200 poker tournament. Uh, big, big buy-in, a lot of people, like a thousand people or something. And I'm thinking, do I play? I don't know. I have to really feel like it. But then I got to think, maybe I feel like playing now. But then I have to think now, at that time, do I feel like playing in two hours, four hours, five hours? 
And it's getting the stage oftentimes for me. It's like, hmm, not really. So uh, one of these days, maybe I'll go in. But uh, yeah, I see these decent type tournaments. Uh, I'll play them. What I do want to play too is a backgammon tournament at some point. I haven't played backgammon in years either. But it's a type of game that it would be really fun if I were to like just play the game with a bunch of with ga I want to be gam got to be gamblers people who play for money but people who think they're all that are very meta game oriented because I've came up with so many different strategies by playing AI so many different humans on different computer measures and myself in different ways where I literally take a back game and board and it's, it's one of very few games you can easily play both sides and really e easy to do. I mean, there's just so many games it's impossible. Or, I mean, you can't play poker against yourself, although sometimes I tried to in different strategic and mathematical, and for mathematical variant ways I did. But it's uh, it'd be just cool the language they would use versus the language I would use because I've created terms for situations that most certainly be different terms other people would use. And so on and so forth. Anyway, thank you for tuning in. Have yourself a great day. Bye-bye.